Hi, this is Trev, and welcome to my blog. Welcome to another exciting episode. This time round, we're going to talk about rust removal. So this is Trev's homebrew rust removal special. I actually did a video, uh, one of my Bedford blogs, uh, ages ago, a few years ago, where I de-rusted an old sump, and I neglected to actually say in the video what the main component was. So I'm going to set the record straight. Lots of people have asked this. So uh, it's a real useful little thing. So here's the video, hope you enjoy it. These are the parts I'm gonna treat. Check out the rust on those. So, full set, so I'm gonna treat these first. The next thing I'm gonna treat, I bought some Maria lamp plinths and um, exceptionally good condition these. They've got a little bit of surface rust on the inside. Got a pair of those. Something else of interest I want to do. I've got a gator that fits on there for the gear stick to come through. And it's plated, the plating's failed, and it's got a nasty piece of rust in there. And I'm, I'm interested to do this because I'd like to know what effect the solution has on the plated parts. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove the old paint off these parts, so I'm going to uh, paint stripper these first before I put them in the solution. Paint strippering. I appreciate that 98% of you will probably already know all about this, so just ignore what I'm saying. But for those 2% that don't, paint strippering. What I always do is dab the paint stripper on, don't brush it on too sparingly, and then, once you've got whatever you're stripping thoroughly covered and coated in the stuff, get a bit of polythene and wrap it up. And what that does is that stops the paint stripper from drying out and it prolongs the lifespan of it so that it can work away for far longer than it would do if you just left it open to the atmosphere. So that's another good tip. When you're paint stripping things, you always probably have to go back over it once or twice to get rid of all the little bits. There's always those annoying little bits that you just can't budge for some reason. I'm going to carry on with me with me paint stripper in for a little bit and then uh, we'll come back when I've got all the paint off and uh, show you the processes for rust uh, removal. Paint stripping complete. Probably have to give it a good three goes over. It was really stubborn in some places as I suspected it would be. Especially around these hinges, they've probably been painted two or three different colours before and then there was the original red oxide underneath that which was incredibly stubborn. So I tacked it with a wire brush to remove the final bits of paint. There's one or two tiny little stubborn bits left. And then scrubbed them really, really well with some washnet liquid and warm water and then finally degreased them with paint thinners. So now we're ready to mix a solution up. So I'm ready to make the solution up now. We've got our parts. They've been paint stripped and degreased. They're all ready. I've got a bucket full of warm water. There's 10 liters of water in here. And I've got the main ingredient, which is good old food grade citric acid. Nothing special about this at all. Nothing at all. Ever so easy to buy on the internet and our ratio is quite weak actually. I'm only gonna put in 10 grams per liter. So we've got 10 liters of water, so I'm gonna need 100 grams of citric acid. So let's open this up. Got some scales. If you put carbon steels, in this solution, then you can have what's called hydrogen embrittlement, where hydrogen is absorbed into the steel components and it makes them brittle. So, definitely no brake or suspension parts, which I know you're probably thinking, as soon as you saw this, you thought, oh, brilliant, I know. I'll take those hubs off and put them in a vat of this stuff and they'll come out gleaming anew. Well, they will, but at what cost? I really wouldn't do it myself. So I only really de-rust bodywork parts or something that isn't really going to be affected 
there's not going to be any terrific amount of load i know i'm using these door hinges they're cast iron and the doors are so light there's not really going to be any load on these so i call this very low risk really obviously bodywork parts so it really only applies to anything with a, a higher carbon content that's what causes it mild steels and things aren't affected so we've got our 100 grams citric acid pull that in the water and then I'm going to give it a good stir up like I say a very weak solution I think I've used 20 grams before and it's more rapid but 10 grams seems to work quite well so I'm going to give that a good stir until it's all dissolved in next component little dab of screen wash or a little dab of detergent or something you only want a tiny bit of this it will work without um, I just put this in because I have read somewhere that it helps to break the surface tension of the water so it kind of acts as another sort of degreaser really it just means that there's more chance of the citric acid coming in full contact with the metal so I'm just going to tiny little dribble of that nothing much at all and then the next thing which is helpful especially as it's getting colder now is a fish aquarium heater so we place that in the bucket at, a, at an angle so a slight angle these work at an angle these heaters and then i'm going to place my parts in the bucket be careful not to break the glass heater I've left the hinges assembled so that it will de-rust the, um, the, the bolt that goes through in the nut and the spring again you see the springs high carbon steel so I don't know whether that will be affected but I can always get some new springs if they break or anything like that so put everything in and that's as simple as it is no more complicated than that Take the gloves off because we've got wet hands before I plug the heater in. The heater's got a red light on so we know that's working. And finally, I'm just going to cover it over with this thick rubble sack. Which would just help to keep the heat in the water. And um, I'm going to leave this now for 24 hours before I go through the next process. It's been about an hour and a half since I submerged these parts in the solution. You'll just have to excuse the washing machine running. I thought I'd just show you this, quite interesting, because one of the things I really wanted to see what had an effect on was this plated up gear stick. It's completely strip the plating off whatever that plating was on there isn't on there anymore it is on the back because there's kind of like some double-sided foam cushioning on the back where the glue still left the plating still under the glue you're actually looking at the plating through the glue there that's why it hasn't removed that the rust's certainly coming off and the plating's completely gone. So that's quite interesting. What's the rust doing? Yeah, that's stripping that rust off that lamp panel. Most definitely started to strip that as well. What are the hinges doing? It's a very weak solution. That nut was completely rusted up an hour and a half ago. And it's certainly looking a lot cleaner than it was. Look at that. The back was horrifically rusty. Yeah, we've still got a lot of rust on the back. I mean, I intend to leave this for 24 hours anyway. At least 24 hours before I come back and do the next stage. And in the past, I've had to just kept on resubmerging it about three or four times over. Um, to get it really really clean but that's just in an hour and a half which is impressive and I think 
what's really speeding the process up is the heater in there. I have read that if it's if the solution's kept warmer, then it's uh, much much more effective, and it certainly has. I'll come back in 24 hours. The next stage in the process is to pressure wash the parts off or wire brush them off under some running water. Uh, they don't look very special at the moment but let's see what happens when I get the water on them. Good results after 24 hours, I think. A few little stubborn bits of rust certainly left on the inside of these lump, but the rest of it's come up as if it had just been stamped out in the factory. Yeah, pretty good. That one's a bit worse. I might just give that a little bit of a scrape round before I put it back in the solution. Hinges have come out very good as well. Really, really good. I mean, they don't look like the same items anymore, I don't think. Really good. A bit of rust in the old uh, gear stick gator. It's been reduced down to just that little black splodge now. And it's taken all that plating, nearly all the plating off. It's creeping round on its own under the glue and taking the glue off as well, so it's sort of burrowing underneath it now. And that top's completely stripped back to bare steel, which is handy. I had wondered whether it would strip this off, and that is handy because I'm just going to paint that body colour because I want this to blend in with the gearbox tunnel. So that's going to be body colour. And then, if I can find it, You'll have a nice little rubber gator on the top, like that, so it looks quite smart body colour. Like I said, it'll blend in nicely, it won't stand out then against the gearbox tunnel. I suppose this is some kind of, um, I don't know, show my complete ignorance here, some kind of zinc coating or something. Uh, certainly not chrome, it wasn't chrome. It's, uh, greeny sort of yellowy zinc um, zinky sort of passive is it called or something coating so I'll put these parts back in for the second go normally give it a good three goes for it's completely got rid of all the rust so I'm gonna put it back in wash it off again put it back in wash it off hopefully for the final time well, I think anybody could be forgiven for believing that these are brand new parts. I'll bring you up to speed. I started the process on Saturday evening and I jet washed them off Sunday evening, which was the last video you saw of me jet washing them off. I've been at work, I've been miles too busy to do anything since. And it's now Wednesday morning. I've literally just taken them out of the acid bath and got them under warm running water and wire brushed them off and they've come out pretty good actually you see we've got some pretty excessive pitting where the rust was but you can see that all the rust has been well and truly driven out now The rust on the back of this hinge has completely destroyed the part number that should be on the back. Just about see it there. But I mean the rest of it's coming fantastically well. The 
There's no way you believe that that was that hinge right at the start. I've uh, done a bit of internet surfing and um, yeah, I believe this was zinc. Uh, the passivation is a process that's done to zinc plating afterwards to give it different colours and this was like that kind of greeny, yellowy colour. So I'm pretty sure that that was zinc passivate or zinc passiv passivation. Probably pronounced that completely wrong. I'm 99% sure that that's what was on there and looking at the internet citric acid dissolves zinc plating in minutes rather than hours this is what it says so yeah that's what it must have been on there so that's that's all sorted out now that little bit of rust yeah that was the bit of rust I was worried about that's what I wanted to get rid of that's completely driven that out now as if it had been sandblasted really so Happy days. Next process will be to get these uh, primed up. I'm going to try these on the van first before I prime these hinges because I may have to give them a little bend to make sure they fit properly. The rest of it's all ready to go really. Just want some uh, decent primer now. Putting on a bit of epoxy or something. But if that's primed really well, painted really well, a bit of wax oil shot in there before I bought it to the van. That's going to last forever, isn't it? Got the hinges fitted on the van and they fit really, really well. These ones have gone on quite well. I just had to tweak this top one slightly and this bottom one slightly, just a light tweak, uh, nothing too much, nothing too drastic at all. I've got all my gaps really, really nicely. Everything's level, everything's gapped up perfectly. And uh, certainly no bodywork distortion when I tighten the bolts up. So, so relieved. So the hinges are all painted and uh, built up, lubricated, and ready to go. Uh, I prepped these up and I realised as they were all hung there because I had them all split up and they were all hung up and I realised just as I was about to put the paint on that these were sort of I would assume like sand cast hinges because they were very very coarse very grainy looking and I thought what I'd do is I'd paint them dry so I was going to give them a couple of extremely light coats of paint followed by like a three quarter coat paint so that um, they'd still appear glossy, but very, very textured. What happened was I was supposed to be somewhere as I was putting the paint on it, it suddenly became apparent. I had a phone call in the middle of painting them and it became apparent that I gotta be somewhere else. So what I ended up doing is I, I desperately needed to give them the final coat. So I just cracked on and did it quite quickly after applying the coat before. And one of two things was going to happen. It was either going to have a reasonable paint finish, which it's got, or it was all going to run off. Unfortunately, it didn't run off. So I've got quite smooth looking hinges. I mean, blimey, it could be far worse, couldn't it? So they, they, I mean, they look brilliant, really, don't they? So happy days. I've cut myself some new rubber gaskets. I don't think they ever had gaskets on these hinges. I think they just literally bolted so it was paint on the hinge to paint on the van. Oh, I can't bear to do that so I've got some one mil rubber and cut myself some gaskets out. I got a brand new set of bolts as well and I don't think they had washers on originally but I've got some washers. I'm beating myself up a bit now whether or not to fit the washers. I kind of think they look better without the washers. Looks nicer without. But it's that old thing, isn't it? Not fitting a washer. I'll never be happy. So there you go. I hope you really enjoyed that one. Of course, there's many different things you can use. There's white vinegar. Uh, there's electrolysis. There's lots of different things. But this has been the most effective way I've personally found of getting rust off small components. Uh, things that you can put in a bath. Of course, don't forget... The old situation with not doing brake parts and things like that okay thanks very much so i'm going to go now 
Uh, don't forget, if you'd like to support the channel, there's a link in the video description, but only if you want to, guys. Thanks very much. Comments in the comment section. Thumbs up all the way, guys. Thanks very much. Love you loads. See you next time. Bye for now.